Now, about a week ago, I posted up on the channel a question. I asked the community, what kind of video would you guys like to see next? And I was delighted that, by a long shot, the number one response was, Michael, take us camping on a cinematic adventure. So today, we are going to Moab, Utah. Now, while we're at it, we're gonna talk about some of the things that you might want to keep in mind if you're going on a solo adventure. But no worries, I won't be yammering on the entire time. I'll, I'll let you enjoy the scenery too. Now, while we're talking about scenery, you know, I asked myself, I said, if I'm gonna take folks camping, how am I gonna capture the grandeur of the landscapes I'm gonna experience? So I said, you know what? How did they do it with those old Westerns where they showed those epic landscapes and I found out they used something called an anamorphic lens. And so, well, that's too fancy for me. I can't afford it, but I could rent one. <laughs> So, enjoy the scenery. I shot it with a wide aspect ratio and I hope that it does a better job of capturing the environment. But still, you gotta get out here yourself in order to truly appreciate the environment. All right, now let's just talk about this right up front. Yep, flip-flops. Now, at this point, I don't even think I've seen my boots in three days, but rest assured, if I find myself yanking on winch cable or crawling over rocks, the flippy floppies go away and the boots come out. All right, now let's slow things up a little bit here. Now, on my last adventure, did you guys watch that series, A Storm in Moab? I had a great adventure trying to get to the White Rim Trail with my friends Mike and Parnell, and man, it was nonstop hilarity because nothing went right. And you might even think, hey, why does he do it? Man, that's expensive, they're breaking parts and nothing's going according to plan. Well, with this video, I really wanted to show the other side of adventure travel. Slow it up a bit and show you one of the whole goals of solo adventure. You get out there and you slow down. We're just not made for all this hustle and bustle and believe me, get off grid for a few days, you'll see what I mean. So if you can, get out there and possibly don't even have a specific day to return. Then you're on nobody's schedule but your own. Now getting back on topic, solo adventure, make sure you file a trip plan. You gotta do that, just a rough plan with your loved ones so they know where you're gonna be. And if you don't report back, if anything should happen, whether you're safe or not, they know that something's amiss and they know about where you will be and when. I'll mention, with Overland Bound 1, you can plan your route in the app and then you can export that route as a GPX file that anybody can see. All they have to do is import it and they'll see exactly what your route is. Now, my friends, welcome to Utah.
once you've had a few moments to rest and relax, take care of the vehicle that got you out here. That is one of the most important things you can do. Open up the hood, crawl underneath, inspect everything. In this case, I had busted off my ham radio antenna going through some branches and well, I needed to repair that. But really give everything a good inspection. You are dependent on your vehicle. Overlanding is vehicle dependent travel. Make sure you take care of the vehicle that got you here safely. Now, a couple of other things about your vehicle. Have the tools you need for your year make and model and also any spare parts that you might need. Some belts, some hoses, definitely bring duct tape and bailing wire. And for myself, I have spare parts that may go bad that I can't maintain out off grid. So that includes some solid state parts, things like the igniter. So just take care of everything when you're there at base camp. Now, once you travel well off the beaten path, hopefully you're off grid, you're far away from anybody, and you have the whole place to yourself. Now, when you're out here, you need communication. I know, I hear you. The whole point is to get away from it all. Well, you don't have to pick it up and use it. You just have to have it. You need two-way text comms of some kind. Now, for me, I use the Garmin InReach Explorer. It allows Corey and I to text back and forth. I text her every single night and it's just a simple hello, good night, I'm doing fine. Now with Garmin it also sends my GPS coordinates so that's as good as a location finder as well. If you have the Starlink, great, you're always connected. Just have two-way communication for safety. Now, if you're really new to adventure travel, I will mention situational awareness in the great outdoors is absolutely essential. Now, I think the veterans and first responders out there can probably agree with me when someone's in their head, that's when things go wrong and you have accidents. So get out of your head, forget what the person said to you on social media or forget that argument you got into or how things are going on at work. You need to be present and focused in the moment. Not only will it ensure a safe journey, but also it'll be good for you as well. Now, if you got a really hectic job in the hustle and bustle, I just got to tell you, you need a longer trip. It might be until day four or five before you finally let go and start living in the moment. That's what it's all about. On the topic of provisions, water. You already got shelter, you brought it with you, that's your vehicle. So food, shelter, water, what do you think's the most important? Probably shelter if you're gonna be in inclement environments like the Mojave Desert, but water is the most important thing you can bring. If you want a, a real rough estimate, just figure two gallons per person per day, and that should be fine for your food and everything else that you need. Point of fact, did you know that if you're a relatively healthy person, you can go for seven days without food, no problem, probably a lot longer. Now, it's not comfortable, but you'll be all right. You can't survive without water. Make sure you have enough.
Oh, and another Overland 101 tip. Don't forget this. This is really important. Always cut away from you. <laughs> Now in terms of essential kit, you don't really need much, but one of the things you're gonna want is a good pot or a pot and pan set. Now it's getting on towards winter and you might think, hey, I don't need to pack as much water because I can get it at the source. There's gonna be snow everywhere. And that's a good thing because, you know, water is really heavy. So if you can get a source, great, but you need something to keep it in. Do you know it is very difficult, if not impossible, to hydrate by eating snow? You need something to melt it in. So bring a pot, melt your snow in the pot, and then you've got drinking water. Now I'm glad to have you with me on this trip and as we start getting ready to build our fire and say goodbye to, to day one of our little journey, I'll, I'll reflect on this. We, adventure for the human spirit is necessary and it may seem self-evident and you think about you know all the things like looking over the horizon, testing your, your boundaries and your limits in order to know what you're capable of. And, those are all really true. But one of the primary reasons adventure is necessary is you get out here and you're reminded what's important. It's not all the artificial things that society builds up, but rather it's whether you got firewood, whether you got water. <laughs> it's the simple things. I grew up in a town of 360 people and you were kind to everybody because you might need their help. So now out in an environment like this, if I see somebody, I'm gonna ask them if they have enough water, if they need any help, if they need anything. And we're not gonna worry about anything like politics or whether they wear sandals and flippy floppies as opposed to boots or anything like that. Everything is distilled down to its basic elements and believe me, that is what's truly important to us at our core. Everything else is kind of a recent fab fabrication. So get out off the grid and be reminded of those simple things and really what is important. Now tomorrow we'll crawl up out of this canyon, have some more adventure for adventure's sake, and continue talking about solo adventure.
Now you probably don't need to hear this, but when you're on your own, take the easy path. Who are you gonna prove anything to? <laughs> no, but seriously, it, take the easy path because you are on your own. You don't have any help. So going on the hard trails is probably not a good idea. If something should happen, well, you're on your own. So when in doubt, get out and take the easy path. Well, I see clouds on the horizon way off yonder. Let's plan a route, get up high, and find base camp number two. Now you remember we talked about taking care of our rig? I acquired myself a new rattle. Don't let rattles go. So uh, I'm gonna see if I can locate what sounds like a suspension rattle. Let's see if I can get this thing to rattle. Nope. That tells me it's probably not the shock or a shock. Drop cloth here, AKA my jacket. It's not gonna be you. You rattle when you twist, but. <clears throat> Get too old for this. You ain't pretty, but. I think you're holding. Damn, that's a hole. I'm gonna show you guys this hole. Do not work here if you've been drinking. Whew. Oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. I hope you're it. I hope you are it, my good friend. Okay, here's what I think happened. So, my worn winch broke, and it broke with the winch line out, so I had to wrap the winch line around the bumper to wind all the excess. And the Factor 55 unit can just shake up against my bumper and I think that's what I'm hearing and that is good news. All right, Let's see if I can take care of this without even bringing my tool roll down. Holy cow. I don't know though, if that were the case, I'd be cheating. Okay. I got my shackles. Clipped on here. So they don't fall off. I always know where to get them. Clip, clip, ready to go. You guys, most of y'all already know this, but overlanding one 101 trail repair 101 you got to talk to your tools you got to talk to your parts if you don't do that your repair will not will not last as long this is uh, proven scientific alike all right, you shush, you shush. I'm used to the shackle rattle. That's not what got me. What got me was the Factor 55 bumping up against a bumper. That was a no siree bob.
don't let rattles go. Now I want to mention those shackles on the bumper. You guys, make sure they're fastened. Run a wire through them so that they don't unscrew. I've probably found about eight shackles on the trails and those can be dangerous. So just make sure they're securely tied if you choose to hang your shackle on your bumper. That has nothing to do with solo camping. Hard to get a sense of scale until you throw the truck in there. Now, those that really know might see my truck go over some of these obstacles and go, hey, it's doing pretty well. It's not grounding out. And I know how heavy that rig is when it's fully loaded. And you'd be right. But let's talk about kit and gear. If you go out the first time just to see what it's all about, if you're new to this, well, you don't need much. Like I said, have your water, your communications, have a trip plan. You're going to be great. You're going to have a fantastic time. If you really, really like it, over the years, you're gonna upgrade your kit to make it more convenient and easier for you to go farther and do more on your adventures. That's exactly the, the way it is with this 80 series. I've been building this thing for about 10 years and it's starting to get to the point where I'm pretty happy with it. So now I'm setting, setting up all cozy like because I found myself a bit of a rainstorm now I also picked a spot oh I do this every time I also picked a spot that uh, is high not in a wash and that's because it flash floods here in Moab. So we'll probably get some real weather here in a little bit. So I'm gonna make sure I strap everything down, tie this rain fly down in four different directions. Now, I actually really enjoy the rain it's uh it's pretty awesome so the truck sputtered and died now i rang up uh frank there at top shop via the old garmin two-way text comms y'all essential so I rang up Frank, I said, Frank, my truck died. He said, give me the code. And of course I got a code reader. So I read the engine code. Well, it was the engine code P300, y'all can look it up. One of the very few pieces of solid state equipment on this old 1996 Land Cruiser. So guess what that means? Do you think I got a spare one in my tailgate storage? 
Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And the reason I got a spare one in the old tailgate storage is because, well, like I said, it's one of the last, one of the only solid state pieces of equipment that makes this engine run. And if a solid state piece of equipment goes bad, you can't fix it. So I got myself a spare. All right. Uh, well, hell, I'm gonna put my chair here. I'm gonna enjoy the view. I, I love it when it rains. It's a lot of fun. It's soothing. I don't know why. But I got a canyon view. Rain dies down, I'll start a fire. If not, curl up inside. Leave the window open like that. And just enjoy the evening. glad you guys wanted to join me on a camping trip out here in Moab and if you like this kind of trip let me know in the comments and perhaps I'll take you someplace else. Now why don't we just watch the sunset? Thank you.